Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the very high level overview of recommendation systems. These days, we are constantly being recommended products that either want to grab our attention and retain our attention or to purchase that particular product. Anything that sort of like magically pops up in our feed is being fed by a recommendation system. So whether it be YouTube videos or Instagram posts, Facebook posts, news articles, Amazon Prime deals, Netflix videos, and so many other products that exist out there, everything is being fed into this recommendation system them to attract our attention. So why would we even care about recommendation algorithms? Well, for one thing, if you have the most powerful recommendation algorithm out there, then that particular algorithm is worth potentially billions of dollars because you can overtake companies whose entire revenue stream or a large chunk of the revenue stream comes from the recommendations and attraction of the viewer base. We can take a look at TikTok, for instance, their main driver behind all of their success is their recommendation algorithm. And we all know that's incredibly powerful and it made them into a multi-billion dollar corporation. So I'm going to attempt to create a collaborative filtering system using matrix factorization to get all of my embeddings straight. And then I'm going to top it off with a k-means clustering algorithm to get my predictions and see in general how well I have done. Collaborative filtering is essentially a tool in order to find the relationships between your subset of observations and your observations are essentially your customers and looking at the relationships between your customers and all of these products that have either been recommended to them and so the intersection value between your row and your column is the score of how well these customers have perceived that particular product. And the main objective behind matrix factorization is to sort of identify a latent factor matrix for your particular customers in a latent factor matrix uh, for your given products. So you would essentially try to recreate uh, that particular, the full entire matrix of all these interactions of your real data. You're trying to recreate that with a prediction of what those customers weights are and your particular product weights are. And once you have figured out what your latent factors are for your given customers and your products, you can then utilize these latent variables to multiply with the, with the incoming data. And then you can generate your given predictions uh, from your highest recommended to your lowest recommended. Uh, maybe you can get the top 10 values, so to say. And you can essentially work with your predictions from there and hope that many of your customers are actually interacting or have positive reactions with these particular recommendations that we have with our system. And the real strength behind matrix factorization is that matrix factorization can implicitly find the relationships of, well, between your users and your products uh, without any relationship explicitly being stated in the matrix format. And talking about interactions, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button while you're at it with those notifications on. That really helps out with this particular video and also my channel in general. Let's get that YouTube algorithm working. Okay, so I'm gonna be going over the high level overview of what I did for a recommendation system. I'm going to be using the movie lens data set over here. You can easily download that from this particular, well, just utilizing this particular link. Uh, this data came from, I think it's University of Minnesota, um, but you can easily check out the data citation what I have over here. So I guess before you even begin, um, I am using Google Colab. I am not paying for the Google Colab Pro. And um, to access their GPU, which is a requirement because I am using PyTorch, uh, you would want to go to notebook settings, change this to GPU and just click on save right there. And then you should be good to go. I think it connected. Yes, I think it connected. So let's go ahead and run this download our data set over here. You can check out your folders. Um, so this is going to be ML dash latest and um, small zip file. And then let's extract that zip file. We have data now over here. You can take a look there and read me links movies ratings etc so we can take a look at the, what that data set is and what uh, dimensions we are working with so there's two primary data sets that in particular we're going to be 
looking at in like in further detail and that's gonna be the movies data frame and the ratings data frame and we are working with close to uh, 10,000 ratings and uh, well, I think that's a hundred thousand ratings and 9,742 movies and so this is pretty much like a hundred thousand customers right there so you can take a real quick look at what those observations look like and as we can see we have user IDs uh, related to the rating so these are particular users so the amount of users that we are working with as you can see there are many duplicates which is a good sign because there's more interactions happening with that particular user and we have, uh, we have a movie id which can join with this particular data set over here and there's a particular rating with a timestamp associated with that and of course we have the title names and what genres that these particular movies are in so let's move on and over here, I just print out some diagnostic stuff. So the amount of unique users that we are working with related to the ratings itself, there are 610 unique users and there are 9,724 unique movies. So if you were to multiply these two together, you're going to get close to, I think it's like 5 million elements, 6 million elements. And the amount of sparsity that this particular matrix uh, is quite high we have 1.7 percent roughly of the matrix is filled and you know as we are working with recommendation systems our matrix is going to be incredibly sparse so you can imagine how large that these particular data sets can become it can grow at a factor of n squared however many um, observations are included versus however many uh, products are added to the overall system so increasing by a factor of n squared in terms of space complexity time if you are about that lifestyle. <laughs> so yeah, so one of the beautiful things about matrix factorization is that you don't need the entire full matrix to have a, an idea of what to work with. In fact, since the matrix factorization implicitly finds relationships, you can have a subset of that full matrix and you can just work from there. So I'm going to be using PyTorch or just Torch in general, get my NumPy's in there. And this is going to be the basic format um, of a matrix factorization of where I am initializing the uh, embeddings over here. You can think of this as like a lookup table or like the word to vec um, that like matrix values associated with my previous video on NLP. Make sure you check that out. And I'm setting all the weights uniform to close to 0 0.05 uh, and we're going to be uh, trying to find a more specific weight for each of these attributes so these are tunable parameters that we have over here and you can think of this as our license variables there and then we have a feed forward and just straight up matrix multiplication we're just plugging in some data and we have a predict function over here which i don't think we'll be using but i think it's implicitly used within the overall um, pytorch algorithm so over here, this is just some cleaning up the data sets we have here. So note that this is not really good practice <laughs> of where I am essentially just reading in the ratings data frame um, from the previous cell. Uh, in practice, the parameter here should be the ratings DF, but I'm sort of lazy. Um, so you want to extract all the user IDs, movie IDs, get them unique. And then we want to make sure that we convert all of our unique IDs to make sure it's like continuous in one particular format. And this is what um, I've done over here. Um, and then you want to make sure you return the ID into, into a tensor format. And you can pause the video, take a look at that code of what I am doing there. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And then we have some helper functions over here. So over here, this is where the, um, like everything is sort of gonna get run. So number of epochs, I'd set that to 120. Uh, as we can see, we have a GPU that's running as I have said it earlier over here, it's running GPU and we initialize the model. We have the number of users and number of items, uh, which we have described up over here. It's going to be, uh, the unique users and the unique items that we are working with. In this case, the items are the movies and the number of factors. I just set that to eight and then, you know, print out the model. This is the model that we are working with. We have two embeddings and these are the initial weights that we are working with. Note that these are uh, the specific items that we are going to be tuning and yeah, and we're going to be seeing a difference there. So we're going to be using a mean squared error loss function and we're going to be using the notorious Adam optimizer 
and we are sending our data so that it is readable in PyTorch format of where the data loader is extremely helpful to put that into view. So over here, this is where I'm actually training the particular model. And as you can see here, I'm just loading the X and Y values uh, from the train loader where the X and Y and yeah, so this is where our X and Y values are. They're just in a tensor format. So that is what we are doing over there. And that is what we are training our data set on. So I'm gonna let this run. Okay, so that didn't really take too long. It only took like a minute, but our last iteration of our loss function value is 0.33. So over here, let's check out what those parameters have been tuned to. So over here, I'm just essentially just printing out the values of the particular weights over here and as we can see they have been changed so if we look at the users factor weight tensor 1.8140 we can compare that to here so 0 0.0136 so yes that is a good sign that the weights of our factors of our users and our item factors have been changed so that's great so final step over here, we are going to be utilizing uh, our model item weight factors, you know, convert that to a NumPy array. And what that looks like, we have 9724, and let's look at this. It's gonna be a NumPy array, convert that tensor on over. This format is going to essentially be the markup of our particular products, in this case, movies of our given weights over here. And we are going to be utilizing the k-means clusters to get a sense as to how well these uh, particular movies are uh, in association with one another. and. From here, um, once we created our clusters, I'm utilizing 10 clusters over here. Uh, we could then have our predictions where I'm essentially outputting each cluster uh, from zero to nine, I believe, so it's 10 in total. And I'm printing out the, the types of movies that one person may observe. And if they like that particular movie, then they have a higher probability that they'll like the other movie. So let's look over here, look at some clusters. So. Let's see, Batman and Robin, maybe you're gonna watch Godzilla, right? Uh, Superman, right? Pete's Drag, I'm not really familiar with many of these videos actually. Uh, let's see if I can pull up a, okay, Shawshank Redemption, a total classic. You're definitely gonna be watching Matrix if you like Shawshank Redemption. Silence in the Lambs, I'm a huge fan of that. Braveheart, huge fan as well. Yeah, so this this uh, this looks pretty good. Yeah, everyone's gonna be watching Lion King, right? So Lord of the Rings, of course. So this looks pretty good. So yeah, that that, that cluster looks pretty good. Gladiator, Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> uh, American Pie. Oh, if you like Dumb and Dumber, you can like American Pie. Matrix Reloaded, Star Wars, Meet the Parents. I'm not really familiar with that one. Forrest Gump, you're definitely gonna like that one. If you oh, it's Schindler's List, yes. Back to the Future, Princess Bribe. Pulp Fiction, oh yeah, you can be watching Pulp Fiction, you like Fight Club, most definitely. Oh yeah, Godfather as well, Fargo, yeah, that, that's pretty good too. The Inception, yeah. So this is the output of that particular uh, recommendation algorithm. So that is my version of how to create your recommendation algorithm. Sure, there might be better ways of doing it, but this is uh, the way that I sort of conjured this up in my head. So if you like what you saw, make sure you hit that like button, uh, hit that subscribe button as well to notifications on. I make a video every Sunday. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.